Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, did you hear about those thieves at the retail store? They're stealing clothes by size. The police say they're still at large. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my top 10 game store pet peeves. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to talk about my uh, top 10 uh, pet peeves about uh, board game stores. You know, there's a lot of great board game stores out there, like Galaxy of Games in West Jordan, Utah. Check it out. But there are uh, many stores that suffer from one or, or multiples of these, and I just want to briefly talk about it and uh, maybe express some of the things I just don't like in certain board game stores. Now, these things are not profound. I've actually have seen years ago, I've seen other uh, game channels do this, and they had many of the same things on here um, because they're universal and they're things we don't like. But these are my top 10 pet peeves about game stores. Uh, number 10 is I don't like a game store that has out of date information on its website. Um, in particular hours, uh, I really hate it when you're thinking, oh, this place is still open. You go there and they're closed, right? Or the days change. Maybe they're no longer open on Sundays or maybe, you know, they, they talk about their stock and that is not in stock. I really don't like out-of-date information on websites just generally. That's one of my big pet peeves generally. And of course, I really don't like it with game stores. So that is my number 10 pet peeve, out-of-date website information. My number nine is, so when I go to game stores, one of the reasons why I like to go to game stores is they're fun places to play games with friends. They're fun places to meet up. You know, it's particularly if you're playing like a, a larger game, you may not have the room in your apartment or whatever. You like to go there. And when you play games with friends in game stores, or sometimes even when you're just browsing in game stores, one thing I really don't appreciate is when the music is too loud. Some places play music at very high levels, and it is really off-putting. And, I mean, like I say, you're playing a game with somebody. You need to be able to talk to them, to communicate to them. Now, you like music. You like a little bit, bit of background noise. That's fine. But sometimes places just play it way too loud. Maybe I'm just too old. I don't know. But uh, my number nine pet peeve for game stores is the music is just too loud. And my number eight is sometimes you go into a store and you want to you wanna see stuff. And, and I want to see stuff I haven't seen before. I want to see the new stuff, stuff maybe I haven't heard about, or a lot of stuff that I do know about and like. But I hate it when I go into a store and they just don't have the, the uh, inventory. So poor selection, poor game selection there, right? I don't like that. Now, I realize a lot of game stores, they pretty much just exist for Magic the Gathering and for uh, other things. Um, they sell other things there. I get that. But I hate when you walk into a store that calls itself a game store and there's not a lot there. Like, there's a lot of these game stores that pop up in malls and they... You know, they're game stores, but you walk in there and they're pretty much all just party games. And then they say the strategy section, you see maybe Risk and Access and Allies, but that's it. I'm not a big fan of that. I really, really don't like that. I really much prefer, um, you know, being able to, like I say, explore and, and get lost for a minute, looking at all the titles and picking a game up and actually looking it over. I, I really like that. When I was in Rock Springs, there was a, a store there that had a... Um, it had a lot of toys, um, but there was it was a game store. It built itself as a game store, and they had games. It didn't look like they had updated their inventory in at least five or six years. And there were, you know, there were a few like one or two new games, and then there were just all of these games that were very old. And um, that place they actually changed management. And I went back again, and they still had a small selection, but at least it was a little more updated. So I just, eh, I don't like poor game selections when I go to a game store. I want to see a lot of games and a lot of new games. So that is uh, number eight, poor game selection. My number seven pet peeve in a game store is sometimes you go to a store to play a game and there just either is not a big area to play a game, so it's very crowded, or the tables themselves are very, very small. So I guess uh, kind of a small play area is what I don't like. This is my number seven. Um... There was a place down in Texas that I used to play some games at sometime, and it was pretty good, but man, when it, when it got crowded, and it could get crowded, 
you were fighting for table space there, you know? And, you know, where I had, like, my cameras and stuff, too, man, it was, it could kind of be a nightmare sometimes. You like to be able to, to kind of have some space to move around, to breathe in these places. And some places, they just, they just don't have a lot of table space. Again, what can you do? I know a lot of these, these people that are owning and running these places, it's the best they can do. And it's not, I'm sure, their fault. But you really want to, for a game store for me to be really, to get the Cody five-star premium rating, you need to have a lot of tables, good-sized tables, and a lot of play area. So that is uh, my number seven pet peeve, small play areas. My number six is something that I don't know. It just seems to be more and more prevalent in the last few years that I've noticed. And that is I really, really, really hate it when I go to a game store and I'm looking at the games and they do not include prices on the games. Um, and you have to hunt down an employee to tell you how much a game is going to be. And, I, you know, I, I worked in sales for years and I remember there's a passage in the Talmud that says something to the effect of uh, you should never ask for the price of a product if you have no intention of buying it. Well, so I kind of stick to that. I'm not going to hunt down someone and ask what, 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 how much something is if I'm not going to buy it, at least not buy it that day. But I may be wanting to buy it in the future. I may want to get an idea of what it costs. And sometimes I do. I'm considering buying it. And I just, I, I hate it. Is it really that difficult to place a, a price sticker on your retail items? I mean, that to me just seems like that's a standard in all of retail. You want to tell people what the item costs. But as I say, it seems like I've been going to more and more stores and I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing prices on the products. So that is uh, my number six. That is no prices on the games. My number five is something that um, I've noticed in the past and I, I haven't noticed it as much lately. And it's really kind of scenario specific or situation specific i should say but most game stores i go to they have something posted of of you know this is a family establishment mind your language which i really appreciate and i really don't like it when game stores do not crack down on swearing that is to say if you've got somebody there who is just letting them rip uh you know f this f that and you're trying to play a game i don't want to hear that now i'm not a prude I've been known to drop the occasional F-bomb myself once in a while. But, you know, some people, that's their vocabulary. They Every other word, literally, sometimes is the F-word. And I just, you know, I don't appreciate it. I'm there to have fun. I don't want to be bombarded with that kind of language. And particularly when there's kids around, it really upsets me. Now, there was a game store I used to go to years ago in Utah. And this was a big problem. There was somebody who just constantly, he'd be, just about every time I was there, he was there. He was a great big guy. And every other word out of his mouth was the F word. And it just would not stop. And they would not enforce it. Now, I don't feel like it's my place to go up to them and say, hey, can you ask this guy to knock it off? I'll go up to him myself and I'll tell him to knock it off. And I did. I went out and says, hey, do you mind? And, and, and he'd cool it for a while. But then it would occasionally pop up and he'd look over to me like, oh, and then he'd bring it down. But it's just like, that's not my place to do that, okay? If, you're, if you want to create a family-friendly environment, please do that. Please be on the ball. And, and it wasn't like this guy was just kind of saying this in the corner and only I could hear it. This guy had a big old booming voice. Everybody in the store could hear this guy. So not enforcing swearing is a big pet peeve for me. That is my number five. My number four, this is something, too, that has to do with um, the facilities itself and it's something that i think i i kind of can blame on owners and stuff because this is something we need uh to have a really good experience and that is you need good lighting if you walk into a game store and it's poorly lit you know as, especially as i get older and my eyes start going uh you need to be able to effectively see what you're playing you need to be able to read that tiny text on those cards you need bright lights and you know i'm sorry if you own a game shop and it's dimly lit Invest in some lights. If you want to encourage people to come there and play, please, 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 bright lights. Now, again, most of the places I play that are well lit. Most of them have good lighting. Um, now, anyway. But I've, I've gone to places before that it was like, well, I might shop here, might, 
but I'm not going to play here, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Usually, when I play, I you know buy drinks and stuff like that. There, I'm not going to be doing that at, at that location with the with the lighting. Um, but you need to be able to see the game. So that is my number four bad lighting. My number three pet peeve is I hate it. I hate it. I hate it when I go to a store, and I've seen this so often. And again, I don't know the circumstances of the store. I don't know what their business is like. But I hate going to a store where there is one overworked employee, where you've got a line of people lined up in front of that employee at the, at the, you know, the, the, it, to, to pay for what they want. In the meantime, there's other stuff going on. His attention is needed elsewhere, and he's, you can t see they're scrambling. I've seen this, the overworked employee, single employee, many times over the years, and I just I don't like it. If I need something, for instance, uh, I was at a store that didn't have prices on their games. And I, uh, you know, I, I wanted to just ask them, hey, you know, what's going on with the prices there? And I couldn't even get to them because there was like this big line of people in front of me and just one guy, the only guy there. Again, I don't know what the specific circumstances of a specific shop is, but man, if possible, more than one employee, that would be very helpful. So one overworked employee, that is my number three. Um, sometimes there are just unfriendly, unhelpful staff. Um, being ignored. I hate that with a passion. When I walk into any store, ideally, I want to be greeted. I want to be said, oh, thank you for, you know, thank you for stopping by, or can I help you with anything? Um, that's kind of the norm. And that's, you know, I worked, when I was in high school, I worked retail, and that's just what I was taught. When you see someone, you say hello. Even if you're busy, just say hello, welcome. Just say something to let people know, you know, you're happy they're there, you, you want their business. So, uh, I really don't like that. And this one was hit home to me recently when I actually walked into a store here in uh, uh, Boise area. I walked in one day and there were a couple of employees behind the counter and they were like looking at their phone or something. They were like watching a video or something. I walk in, ding, ding, ding. And they don't look, and I like looked at them expecting some kind of acknowledgement of my existence. And they're just like, eh, like okay, fine. You know, and they look like they were early 20s or something like that. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So I looked around the, the store and it looked pretty good, but I remember thinking, um, you know, if, if, if no one's going to talk to me, I'm certainly not going to buy anything. And I went in there thinking I was going to buy something. And uh, so I didn't. I left. Well, a few weeks later, I decided, you know, I'm going to go I'm going to go in. I'm going to give them another shot. So I went in again, opened the door. Same thing. People behind the register talking completely ignored me. I'm like, All right, whatever. I just looked around briefly because I, I think I was looking for something specific. And one guy did come up to me eventually, and he said, oh, hey, is, can I help find anything? I said, oh, no, thank you. So I appreciated that belatedly. But really, when you're walking in the door, there needs to be something there. That first impression counts. It matters. That's just good retail business, right? And I really don't like being ignored when I walk into a store. I'll be blunt. I don't like being ignored at all. But when I walk into a store, I appreciate someone acknowledging my existence. So that is uh, unfriendly uh, staff and being ignored, my number two. My number one is, again, something that I just think there is absolutely no excuse for. And this is an important one because it's an important part of my game experience. There is nothing that really turns me off from a game store more than dirty bathrooms. I hate going into a store and using the restroom, having a good time using the restroom, and it's just filthy. Now, again, I get over the day things can happen and you can be busy. I get that. But when there's just this consistent pattern of just filth every time you go there, you stop going there. There was a place I used to go to quite a bit and they had just this filthy bathroom. They eventually moved locations and I don't know what happened. The, the lo new locations, they always kept their bathrooms very, very nice. But at that original place, I just couldn't believe that bathroom got as dirty as it did. So I really enjoy using a clean restroom. Who doesn't? And so that is why Dirty Restrooms is my number one pet peeve of all time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is my top 10 peeves for game stores. Let me know. What do you think? Are you uh, are there things you don't like about game stores maybe that I missed? Or is there something I said that you agree with or disagree with? Let me know. I'd be very happy to help. Uh, as always, please leave a comment here on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on the discriminatinggamer.com. Again, we'd ask you to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd ask you to check out my other channel, Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history, things like that. It would really mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to that channel. And also, I would ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to humbly 
uh, if, if you uh, like what we do here, please click on the Super Thanks button and leave a tip. That would mean a lot to us. Say, did you hear about those crooks that robbed that calendar store? They got six months. Please somebody help me. I'm my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going. And I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me. I'm the solid ground. It's a long time. And I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Jack knows that I love to fight. But I don't ever know when. It's a fine line. To get me crying. But God let me in. Okay, uh, 70. Yes. Ah! Mother Hubbard. That's it. He cut across there. He's on the boulevard somewhere. All right. Okay, I'm George. <laughs>